there is a new series I'd like to start and try. Um, there is a organization, an organization, that's called the American Civil Defense Association. And um, they have magazines from the 60s up until, you know, um, modern times right now on um, civil defense. And I thought it would be fun to do like a recap on these, um, on these magazines. So to start this series, um, I'm going to start with Journal of Civil Defense, 1968, Volume 1, Issue 2. This is the earliest one that they have. And um, I'll show some pictures here of what it looks like. I read through it and um, I pulled a couple things I thought were interesting. On page two, um, well, I guess let me to start better. Um, so just put yourself in the mindset of, of when this is written. So 1968, um, you know, nuclear is, um, you know, everyone thinks it's right on the horizon that, you know, they're gonna wake up to sirens going off and the world changing forever. So th just to put yourself in the, the kind of mindset of where this is. So in the journal, 1968, in volume one, on page two, uh, this is a quote. For recovery to be possible, it is necessary that a considerable fraction of the people should survive, that organized effort in the country should continue, and that the basic materials and tools should remain available for the work of rapid reconstruction. So when they're talking about this reconstruction, this is in the mindset again of nuclear attack from Russia. And um, I have some stuff that I thought were, was very applicable for that, um, that little snippet when I was reading. This is clearly speaking to a nuclear attack. However, this shows in the action seen today, in current modern times, with emergency management at all levels. Think back to the past winter storm in Texas that had a just horrific outcome for so many people. Emergency management had mutual aid agreements set up with power companies to come in and fix power lines. Food distribution and fuel distribution, um, minus the two days of the actual uh, storms, had supplies coming into the state as best as they could. Um, even with the power out, they were doing the best they could. Hardware stores like Lowe's and Home Depot and local stores had um, already started calling in parts for you know plumbing and um, all kinds of house repair stuff. And um, they ran out really quick, but then they had stores from all across the country just, just dumping stuff into Texas to try and fix what was going on. Not only does having materials and tools ready to start fixing damage strictly fix the damage. It also gives a very good mental and emotional boost. So again, this last winter storm in Texas, because it's kind of the, the easiest analogy right now, people are really upset. Some people, some people still don't have water, you know, and we're a month away from this thing, um, a little over a month away, I think. But I would say for the most part, you know, once people saw that, you know, the lights came back on and they stayed on this time and that, you know, um, cars were on the side of the road, but now they're starting to be towed back and people are starting to drive around again, that, um, you know, huge streets had massive main brakes, but the workers were getting new pipes installed or repairing the main, the mains and repairing the streets. Stores are starting to have shelves come back. Um, power company trucks were lined down so many streets with guys rerunning line um, to get power going again. And when you see that, it's not just, you know, oh, I'm glad it's fixed. It's you, you have a, a boost inside of you that, you know, you are happy to see what you consider normal happening again. And uh, that's just a huge thing. Next, um, this is also on page two, and this is the quote. The first purpose of course is to save lives. 
So what does that mean? Let me read it again. The first purpose, of course, is to save lives. I think that this is still very true today. When anyone who wants to take a more active role in their own basic survival, this is a very deep reason. You know, when people um, go through something really terrible, you know, Katrina or um, Sandy, you know, up on the East Coast, or the wildfires through Canada and, um, you know, all the way through Montana and California and Washington, all those wildfires, or even in Italy, the massive wildfires they had, or Australia. When you go through something that you are genuinely concerned that you are going to die, um, it makes you want to be better prepared so that doesn't happen again, especially if you have you know, loved ones, whoever that might be. And um, let me just say this, this quote one more time from page two. The first purpose, of course, is to save lives. So the very, the only reason, the first reason for, you know, when they were discussing this was for civil defense from a nuclear strike. And, you know, take away the nuclear strike, but include that with, you know, wildfires, whatever it might be today. And that's your main goal. You know, I mean, we, I always talk about and all these other, you know, Canadian prepper and Such and all these other channels all talk about, you know, don't just survive, but thrive. And I agree 100% where, you know, everyone needs to talk about starting is starting with um, making sure you are alive and making sure your loved ones are alive. So, you know, do you have some kind of shelter, even if it's just a tarp? just to keep you out of the elements? Do you have water to stay hydrated? Do you have security to keep you safe and your family safe, you know, for whatever reason might occur? Do you have food so you can have energy to fight off, you know, disease or have energy to do security or energy to leave a situation? Because if you don't have those things, then that's when you start, you know, flirting with the line of, really being a life concerning situation. This is number three. This is also from page two. The great economic strength of our country, the United States, should give us the tools by which to establish civil defense, which will be needed in the near future. And again, think the mindset of this being written is again, people thinking they're going to send their kids to school or they're going to go to sleep and they're going to hear those air raid sirens and, uh, it's going to get real bad real quick. So that's, that's the mindset of this. Um, it made me wonder, um, when it's talking about the economic strength, because um, just from an objective standpoint, um, we as, the, as a country of the United States um, are not in a good economic position. We are in so much debt and getting so much more debt, especially in the last uh, year and a half. Um, so I was just curious. Um, this made me wonder just how much um, our dollar, you know, the U.S. dollar, has lessened since 1968 when this was written. So in 1968, when this was written, a one one dollar would be equal today to seven dollars and fifty six cents. So that isn't, you know, at first thought that doesn't sound like a lot, but Listen to this number. This is a cumulative rate of inflation of 655.8%. 655.8% of inflation. That's pretty just mouth dropping how much that is. Additionally, the national debt in 1968, because I thought this was pretty interesting too, was $347 billion, and, and people were ranting and raving about how, or well, that's probably the wrong term. They were yelling about how we needed to stop all this spending because we wouldn't be able to pay it back. We'll look at today, and as of yesterday, the national debt is $27 trillion, and that's not counting, you know, all the the fluff around, you know, debt, um, that's just the, the dollar, you know, 27 trillion from 347 billion. Um, just crazy. To conclude, 
just like this was written in 1968, the best way for society, the United States or whoever you, what country you're in, the best way for society as a whole to get back on our feet, you know, and get back to whatever we call normal after being knocked down is to be individually as prepared as possible. Thereby, just like I said before, freeing up local, state, and federal resources to go to the large scale catastrophes that are happening. You know, and I mean, and that's when you really start kind of thinking back of, you know, am I, am I dry inside? And can I hydrate with something that, you know, is water? And can I hydrate with, with, some, reason, with some option? And um, can I get food in me? To sustain myself and am I you know warm or cool depending on the type of year if those are the things you know when you really start being back to survival mode um, let those other resources go to where they're needed so then everyone can kind of get back to normal on you know whether you're you live in Australia Europe Asia whatever it might be it still holds true for those situations for those communities and I hope this is helpful. Um, it was kind of fun reading 1968. I'm going to try doing a couple more of these. And, um, and I guess put in the comments or a thumb up, thumb down what you think. And uh, I'll try to make some more. Thank you for watching.